Our pastor, Larry Lodenreef, is away on vacation. He will be returning next week. This week is on what is a disciple, and we're going to dive into the blessing rhythm and what that all means. So, Thurman, would you like to open us up in prayer? Yes. Okay. Heavenly Father, most gracious and kind, for whom all blessings flow, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this day. <clears throat> Bless our uh, uh, comprehension so that uh, we may understand the lesson. And bless those that are in need of your love and mercy. Uh, thank everybody that prayed for me, and I will pray for them. Uh, these are things we ask in our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Man, so what is a disciple? Would each of you like to give me what you think of your description of a disciple is? You want to start off with you, Thurman, since you're further away? <laughs> Good to know. A disciple is somebody that uh, tells other people about Jesus. Okay. Okay. Um, Stephanie, would you like to give your example or your explanation of a disciple? Um, I believe a disciple is a student of the Lord mm -hmm. that then goes and spreads that um, wisdom and knowledge and discernment and, and love to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trina, would you like to? I had a stroke. Okay. I had a stroke. She, she had a stroke, so okay. it's kind of slow, but she can still. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, we understand. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, please just stop us. And Trina's husband, would you like to give? I'm sorry, Louisa? Katrina. 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 Okay. Forgive me. I just met them today. Forgive me. No. Katrina's husband. Mm -hmm. Would you give me your name? Yeah, yeah, Chris. Hi, Chris. Would you like to give your definition of what a disciple is? A disciple is a student of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's in the sense that we know it when we talk about disciples, is the discipline to learn, mm. to understand, to comprehend the things that have been taught by Jesus and to follow those ways. All right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's just get to it. Let's get to the meat and bones of the thing. Right to it. <laughs> get to it. Okay. So if you go to the back of your packet, where it says, what is a disciple's three key characteristics? Now, Pastor Mary asked me to go over this, so I don't know if you guys went over this last week. No. Okay, so I love it. That is brand new. Okay. Okay. And, and so it goes into, what is a disciple? Three, three key characteristics. We are called by God to be disciples of Jesus, and the core mission of the church is to make disciples. So the most fundamental question is, what is a disciple of Jesus? At discipleship.org, we recommend the following simple answer. A disciple of Jesus is someone who is following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, and is committed to the mission of Jesus. We find Mark 1, 17 and Matthew 4, 19 to be a helpful verse that can serve as a useful framework around which we can place the, care, the teachings of the New Testament on what it means to be a disciple. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will and, and I will make you become fishers of men. That's the ESV version. Note the three key characteristics of a disciple. He or she follows Jesus. He or she is being changed by Jesus. He or she is committed to the mission of Jesus. The diagram at the beginning of this post is a simple way that we sometimes picture how people grow as disciples. So the three examples was one was head. In the mind, the decision to follow Jesus has been made. Now he or she needs to connect in discipling relationships. I like that. The heart. In discipling relationships, we are changed by the Spirit to be more and more like Jesus. Now he or she needs to minister to others. So this is why we do it. This is what we do. In the hand, by our actions, we actively committed to the mission of Jesus. Now he or she needs to share the gospel and bless and disciple others. I just want to correct what I said. We did, so we didn't go over exactly this, but it goes right into what we were speaking okay. about last week. Real good. Thank you. 
So there's a whole little skit down here. So Stephanie, if you want to read it, I'll be happy. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Scott Sager joined me, joined with me to write the short book Disciple Making, the core mission of the church, and the following is the excerpted, excerpted, excerpted. I can't say the word. First chapter of the. It's an excerpt. First mm -hmm. chapter of that book. I, Bobby, became friends with Larry as we watched our sons play hockey together. Larry happily accepted my invitation to join a Bible discussion group. Through this discussion group, it became clear Larry knew nothing about the Bible. Growing up in a rough New York community, he had experienced trauma at the early age of 12 when he saw a member of the Mafia kill his mm -hmm. father. It so traumatized him that he spent the next 30 plus years of his life keeping himself far from conversations about death and ultimately about God. Yet because of this new friendship, he was getting into the Bible and learning a lot too. One day, Larry described to a co-worker what he was learning about the Bible. In response, the man questioned and cha challenged Larry's new realizations about God, Jesus, and the Bible. Returning to our Bible study confused and seeking clarity, Larry wanted to be sure this new path would be worth it. Bottom line, he asked me, what is it all about? He wanted to know the point of life and how Jesus fit in. People have always asked questions like this in various ways. Why am I here? What is God's purpose for my life? Where is my life going? How does it all end? These were probably the same questions Adam and Eve had asked God during their mm -hmm. daily visits in the Garden of Eden, and people are still seeking answers to them in our day. I gave Larry a quick answer. God wants a relationship with you in which you trust and follow Jesus. This bottom line, one sentence response didn't include a warning about hell, although I was concerned about that for him, or the reality of life after death in general, even though that is important or that he would need to follow the teachings of the Bible, which developing a relationship with God requires. Mm -hmm. There was time for those things. I was trying to disciple Larry the way Jesus discipled people, through relationship. He needed to know, bottom line, what it was all about, and I told him it's all about trusting and following Jesus. It was a short, uncomplicated way to tell him God wanted him to become a disciple of Jesus. That is what God wants of all people. He wants everyone in the world, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, that's Revelation 7-9, to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So what is a disciple? A biblical de definition of a disciple. Okay, Stephanie. Sorry, yes. Okay, I'll just stop right here. Yes. So what I wanted to say, a lot of times, my experience with church is, First, you, you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you get baptized, you become a member of a church. And for me, it was never clear what is next. It's, okay, there has to be more. Right. So, when I was explaining to Pastor Mary a couple of weeks ago, I said, no, there's more. Yes. Okay, because if that was it, then we would be gone. He would just take me. There's nothing else for you to do. Okay. So, we started um, going back and forth over discipleship, which we have been talking about over the year. Yeah. And he said, Lydia, I said, no, it's got to be more. It's not fulfilling just to believe and receive and come right. to church every Sunday. There must be something he wants me to do. Right? That's and so, yeah. And so this to me is very personal and precious to me. Because this is what happens next. Okay? Right. We all have free will. You can choose to go to the next level or you can be lukewarm. Right? right? You can stay in that space of... Okay, I've received and accepted Jesus, mm -hmm. got baptized, go to church. And that's it. Yeah. Now, there's a lifetime of learning involved in practicing, and uh, what was acceptable yesterday may not be acceptable today. Mm -hmm. Our behavior, we, as we learn more, our behavior should improve, and our ability to talk to people about the Lord should improve, too. It, you know, Mm -hmm. It's education about graduation. Yep. And why we, <laughs> and why we why we go to the next level. Because I think of the twelve, but there was only three that went to the transfiguration on the mountain. There was only three when he was up in Gethsemane that he asked to, to pray for him. Yes. So I look at those things. Why those three and why not the whole, you know, right. twelve of them. Right, yeah. 
right? And in the end, he only, like with John, the, it was John, um, the one that Jesus loved, he said, oh, yes. he gave his responsibility for his mom to him. Mm -hmm. So everything that Jesus did, I believe, has a meaning sure. and we're supposed to be able to. And I believe because John was loved, he was the apostle of love. Mm -hmm. So he turned his mother over to a person that walked in love. That right. was their characteristic. Yes. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, oh, yes. And I agree. I love this answer because, and this is good for me too, because I think a lot of times we kind of worry. Like it was, it was like, you know, he said, I didn't say anything about hell, although I was concerned about that for him. And, and it's funny because I feel like I go through this whenever I'm, you know, trying to speak to someone about the Lord or, or any of it, it's like you go through like, oh well, gosh, I really think that they should know this. This feels important. But taking it and simplifying it and and kind of meeting people where they're at and and knowing like Pastor Larry is really good at that. He just he doesn't jump right in. He just kind of and each person is different. But this relationship I think is the key point to spread because mm -hmm. I think that's 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 a big one that I think that we don't really well I didn't have a lot of experience with because like you said when when for me it was the same way I went I was Catholic and I did all the things that you're supposed to do not knowing why I did them and that was it you just did that but there was no that was it and the, you can actually have a relationship mm. with the Lord and I feel like if people knew you can actually have a relationship and you can feel the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's, and I love that that's mentioned there, and people, more people knew that it's it's a really personal thing. It's just not a thing that you do, a thing that you practice. It's, you can have that, he like wants, like it says he wants a relationship with you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going on. Yeah, it's so Bible study. Stop, stop right there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Cut myself up. When you're feeding a baby, if you give it too much food at one time, it spits it out. Yes. So if you're starting off with a baby Christian and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of got a spoon, you got a spoon, feed them and give them what they can digest and absorb at one time. Because if you try to give them everything at one time, it choke mm -hmm. them to death. Yeah. And I think it needs to just be said. For me, you need to just tell me, okay, this is what we're doing next. Right. Just so you know. Yeah. I'm not just teaching you this to, you know, right. just so you'll know. Our purpose is yeah. to equip you. To, right, to become a disciple so that you can go out and make disciples. Right, yeah. If you tell a person that, oh, so now I'll pay more attention. Now I know I got a purpose. Right, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, you know, God, yeah. Jesus himself came back to tell us, you know, the yeah. Great Commission, right? Right. Because right. he had a purpose. Let's go. Okay. So we're, we're at, so what is a disciple? Mm -hmm. A biblical definition of a disciple. Linguistically, the word for disciple in the Greek is Mathetus, and yeah. although we translate it disciple, it also means learner, student, or follower. This word is most akin to the environment of an internship where an expert apprentices a student toward competency in a trade or skill. This, relationships involve, this relationship involves head knowledge, but focuses upon applying that knowledge to everyday situations of life to equip the learner with wisdom. Mm -hmm. This is so spot on. Mm -hmm. The hope is that the apprentice in a trade will be the master teacher mm -hmm. of others in years to come. In addition to the linguistic route, we could also answer the question, what is a disciple, by looking at the descriptions of disciples of Jesus found in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Taking our cue from various Bible passages, we discover a disciple is someone who uh, one, trust Jesus so much they pledge their full allegiance, called faith in him, mm -hmm. imitates Jesus' life completely as both their teacher and Lord, looks to Jesus' teaching, teachings as the basics of, basis of moral decision making, loves Jesus so much that love spills over into every other relationship as well, and forms their life around Jesus Christ. Does that feel overwhelming? Don't lose heart. Instead, slow down and return to the simple yet radical call of Jesus to follow him. Those of us who regularly help churches learn to focus on disciple making have learned that people need a practical, specific, and memorable definition of a disciple. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you to read that one 
that one paragraph right there over. Yes. yes so that, right. That's so it. does all that feel overwhelming? Mm -hmm. Don't lose heart. Instead, slow down and return to the simple yet radical call of Jesus to follow him. Those of us who regularly, regularly help churches learn to focus on disciple making have learned that people need a practical, specific, and memorable definition of a disciple. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like you were saying, practical. Like, mm. what are my next steps? Mm. I'm the same way. Like, I want to know, okay, this is, this is the goal. This is where we want to get to. Okay, tell me some practical things that I can do mm. to get, get there. And in yeah. that, answering the what, when, where, and how, your purpose comes forth. So what is my part in the what, when, where, and how? What does God call me to? And what is my call? What is my gift? What is my talent? What is my part of the body? And then and, that brings you right back to the relationship, because you got to have a relationship with oh. the Holy Spirit to, if, for, in order to know what that is for you. Yeah. And what is that calling? Because I think along the road of becoming equipped, it becomes clear to you what your part is. Are yes. you the foot? Are you the hand? Exactly. Are you the head? You know, and then when you think of the gifts of the Spirit, what gift were you gifted with? So for the true. equipping of the saint, for the yes. building of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. The, <clears throat> do whatever's put in front of you. Do whatever work is put in front of you. I can't do something that's behind me and over in the corner. Mm -hmm. Whatever he puts in front of me, whether it's to hold the door open and smile at some somebody when I'm in the store or something, or have a little chat with the guy standing in line with me at the grocery store, or whether it's to pass out produce or go to the jail or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is, do mm -hmm. the work that. That he, would, that, that he was doing when he was here in his place and then, you know, and try to, you know, and try to do it in a cheerful, uh, with peace and joy. And so somebody, you know, what's he got to be so happy about? You know, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon any day, you know. Yeah, I love that acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, someone. Yeah. That's not what it means. But, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. And so, it's simple, yes. silly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. when you there. keep it simple, one, you don't offend, then to the person you're talking about, I can do that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But if you make it too high and lofty, yes. if you put too many syllables in the explanation yes. and it's deliberate, mm -hmm. then you lose people in the translation. Yeah, because then it just sounds like an mm -hmm. elite club that you mm -hmm. can't ever be a part of. Like, and oh, says, I don't know. And, you know, Jesus dealt with 12 simple men. 12 simple men. Unlearned men is yes, how they describe exactly. them. Go ahead. Y'all just said it. Keep it simple. Jesus had a thing to be said. Of. And uh, he said, well, much more must I do? Uh, in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. He said, mm -hmm. He brought forth the, kid, the children. It was always around children. Mm -hmm. They always talk about he fed 5,000 men. But he fed thousands. Yeah. Because all the men come with their, the ones that had family brought their families to. The ones that had kids. The women that had children, they brought their children. Mm -hmm. So he made a point that if mm -hmm. the main thing that Jesus came and said, he wanted us to be humble. Yeah. Humble is 63 times in the Bible where God deals with that. Humble means in other words, when he talks about meekness, talking about power under control, means that I'm willing to learn. That's what a disciple is. I'm willing to learn. Most people are not willing to learn. They just want to get what they can. And they, because preachers preach so... I don't even want to talk about what I heard sometimes. <laughs> but but they, they, they make things. They want you to... They want to talk about, oh, the Greek says this, and the uh, and, and the Hebrew says yes, this. Right. Intentionally, God had allowed this book to get into the hands of some monks that spoke English and allowed them to come up with the King James. Mm -hmm. that, so we could understand it. Mm -hmm. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we didn't have to use mm -hmm. Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Because that's where we have the problem now. We're not, we are people that read the Bible, we don't study it as well as mm -hmm. I yes. it. Mm -hmm. And that, that simpleness comes from being obedient. Right. That's, part of, that's part of being a disciple. Mm -hmm. 
and studying the Word of God. Right. And the connection that we have to make is, first of all, we got to find out what Jesus was talking about because everybody talks about the gospel. Right. What, what, does is that the, mean? what is what is the gospel? Right. Well, everybody says the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is not the gospel. Mm -hmm. Contrary to all belief, Jesus came preaching about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then, how can the gospel be complete without teaching about Jesus' life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his life, it meant, if you tell someone, a simple person, what is the gospel? Oh, it's about Jesus Christ who came here and he lived to teach us how to be like God wants us to be. Because that's what he came for at first. And also, he came to save us, to be that offering for our sins. But we've got so many people that wants to elaborate and draw that out because they're sticking with the New Testament instead of dealing with the whole Bible. The whole Bible. The whole yes. Bible was given to us by God. Absolutely. So we can learn. And so everything is based on study, especially a disciple. Mm -hmm. Because it, it says here, a disciple is a person that, a, a student, a, a person that studies mm -hmm. and will learn. Mm -hmm. We don't, when you can go through our neighborhoods and everywhere, you see Jehovah's Witnesses out on the street. Mm -hmm. You see these young Mormons out here. They sacrificed two years of their life so they can go and take the word out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We as Christians have something that's so special mm -hmm. that is given to us, and it's called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to teach us to make it simple, God. Right. So and, and I, I'm going I'm to no, no, no. let you go because. It's open for them. As you were speaking, what came to me, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father. Except for the Son. Yeah. Right. So yeah. as you, in the beginning of your comments, the way, right there I wrote it, learn the way. That's he right. came to show us the way back to the kingdom. That's, right. what, I, that's what I said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just, you know, yeah. adding to what you yeah. just said. Yeah. And so Jesus had a purpose, he had a focus, and he carried it out. And and he did it simply. He was, I love the way when he talks, he just, he was simple. Go ahead. Yeah. As per definition of the gospel, it's, uh, you know, the word means, the uh, gospel means good news or uh, mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. Uh, yeah. the good news or the truth about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Without having to, you know, if somebody wants to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get John 3 16. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole, the whole Bible. But that's a big, that's a key thing. It's the whole Bible. And if we are going to be disciples, we need to be Bereans first, right? Mm -hmm. We need to know the whole Bible because it's all relevant. It speaks of Jesus from beginning to end or from cover to cover, however you want to say it. So I think that's an important point that he's, he made about whole Bible. That's mm -hmm. a important. Well, let's, let's go further. So, it says, would you show them where we're at? Yes. Okay. We offer here a definition of a disciple that makes sense and any room for all the important descriptions of kingdom living we just listed. It's based in Jesus' invitation to Peter and Andrew. I love that. The first introduction to the, um, to the disciples. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. In this single verse, we find three elements of what it means to be a disciple. Follow Jesus. Follow me. Being changed by Jesus, and I will make you become. I love that because I think sometimes we think we're doing it in our own strength. Or well, we try to do it. We try to do it. I mean, yes. like I said, it's just simple, but we just try to, we just do too much. Yeah. It's my, not the kids, Absolutely. and we do too much. Yes. And joining Jesus' mission, fishers of men, right? And it says this framework is the basis by which thousands of church leaders working with discipleship.org and, and .org network have adopted the following definition of a disciple. Then it goes on. So, Stephanie, would you continue reading? Absolutely. Because I'm going to go and get some more printouts. I'll yes, be right back. Sure. Okay. 
So a disciple is someone who's following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, and is committed to the mission of Jesus. Mark did not include Mark 117 for the purpose of defining disciple, but it serves as a helpful framework for understanding what it means to be a disciple. Everything the New Testament teaches about being a disciple can be categorized under these three elements. Following Jesus. First, a disciple is someone who follows Jesus. Read through the New Testament and you will find the word Christian used only three times. Look for the word disciple, though, and it shows up 296 times in the NIV. This means the English word disciple shows up 99 times more often than the word Christian. While some people today might read Jesus' command to follow him in Mark 117 and Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and assume it to be only for the 12 and not for the modern-day believers, that is simply a false narrative. Jesus' great commission doesn't end with a person's baptism, but continues with the commitment to obey everything Jesus commanded, Matthew 28, 28, which includes the command to make disciples. In this way, Jesus' original call extends to everyone to follow Jesus as his lifelong learner to the very end of the age and to also become a disciple maker. Being changed by Jesus. Second, as we follow Jesus, we change. The New Testament promises that as we pursue God's glory, the Holy Spirit transforms us into his image, 2 Corinthians 3.18. When Jesus told Peter and Andrew, I will make you become, Mark 117 ESV, he was promising core transformation, and as we read the disciples' stories, that's precisely what we see. For example, take James and John who left their father. The nets and the hired hands to follow Jesus. What kind of character did these men have when Jesus called them? Mark's gospel tells us Jesus gave them a nickname, Sons of Thunder, that's Mark 3.17. This means that their father, Zebedee, was a hothead, or that they were hotheads, or both. We discover that James and John had a dark streak inside them that wanted to destroy their enemies. Their anger and rage boiled to the surface one day in a region called Samaria, a region of half-Jews who hated the Jews as much as the Jews hated them. When the Samaritans snubbed Jesus and his band of apostles, James and John's anger boiled over and they asked Jesus, Do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them all? Luke 9:54. <coughs> Jesus rebuked them for their suggestion, but did not exclude them from the group. Mm. In today's cancel culture, James and John would have been shamed, shunned, and shuttled out the door for their inbuilt dislike of Samaritans. Instead of canceling them, Jesus saw that the two brothers needed more training from him and pulled them closer mm -hmm. and strove even more to impress on them his God life. Amazingly, by the end of his life, the elderly John was known not as a son of thunder, but as the apostle of love, mm -hmm. having re referenced love in his gospel and first letter, letter one John, more than any more than in any other New Testament writer, our world tells us people don't change, and although that may be true, when people follow Jesus, Jesus changes them. Wow, that's just refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, didn't that's, I just touch you? That that was because that's the solid truth. Mm -hmm. And even as a believer, you can get trapped in that people don't change mm -hmm. belief. But man, when you're all mm -hmm. in, you just starts it. Can you do it? It's given us a hope in a society where there's there's not a whole lot of hope. Mm -hmm. They in a society that doesn't want to tell you about the hopeful things, they want to tell you about the hopeless things. And uh, mm -hmm. the news is all one-sided, mm -hmm. you know, and sensationalism, and story oh, of 11, mm -hmm. man bites dog, you know, right. it's all, all yeah. sensationalism, or mm -hmm. it's all uh, blowing it, and get, they want to tell exactly the worst possible thing that could have happened, and, mm -hmm. and there's wars all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, Stuff and things that we don't understand. Uh, why these people can't just 
just minimal, minimally get along to the point where they don't have to take up arms against each other and, and, and things like that. It's hard for us to understand because we're in a society where we're uh, supposed to be uh, tolerant yeah. and we're in a group that's supposed to be loving. Tolerant is one thing, mm -hmm. you know, but loving is a couple of steps up from yeah. tolerance. Amen, brother. Well, let's go forward. Joining Jesus' mission, third, the change Jesus works into our lives lead us to model our entire lives after Jesus, which includes our commitment to, to him and fish for people. In this, we learn to make disciples as Jesus made disciples. After all, if we obey everything Jesus commanded, that means we too will learn to rep replicate the process by which we became his disciples. To be a mature disciple of Jesus is to become a disciple maker like Jesus as well. It is a natural process. It is a natural process. I was just going to say, you know. Well, see, that's the next because, step. Yeah, it's funny yeah. because as you were reading just even the first part, I'm thinking, yeah, that just comes naturally. Yeah. And if, and if that's not emphasized, if that's not explained, it's not enough that you accept Jesus. He has a plan and a purpose, and this is the general plan and purpose for all of us. Of course, you can just choose not to do it, but this is the direction of the ship. This is where we're going. Yeah. This is why we ask you to come to Bible study. This is why we ask you to take additional training and classes outside of Sunday morning, because we're equipping you yeah. to be a disciple, to make disciples. Let's go forward. We follow Jesus. We are changed by Jesus. And as we follow the one who spent his time making disciples, we too commit to make disciples as he did. Loving people as Jesus loved people through service means that we want to see people come to faith in Jesus and embrace God's kingdom rule in their lives, John 13, 34. Because we love people and want God's best for them, we want to help them become disciples and grow as disciples. With our definition of a disciple in mind, with these three elements, the follow-up question is in order. Every one of us should ponder the question, am I a disciple of Jesus? Let's just get to it. Answering this question calls for more deliberation than where do I go to church? Or when do when did I get saved? Whether or not you are a disciple of Jesus has strong implications for how you live today, not just for a decision made years ago. How many times do you go places and they'll say, Do you remember the moment you got saved? Like that is the thing. You remember that you were saved. I remember the day and the time I was at this. Right. Like that was the moment and the, and the end, was, the beginning and the end. Mine was a growth process yeah. out of AA and into the church mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. it was, uh, I understand. This, you know, you grow and, you and however the opportunities come to it. And mm -hmm. Not that I didn't know, my, you know, my uh, parents were and everything. Mm -hmm. I'd been around it somewhat, but they'd been in and out of the church and stuff mm -hmm. quite a bit, so... Because, yeah, because that's not what makes it stick. And I say that because I'm realizing this myself. I've been in church my whole life, you know, but it, that's not, that's not what, this is, this is probably some of the reason why people don't stick around or it doesn't, you know, mean much to them because everybody thinks, kind of thinks that that's what it is. It's, oh, you just go to church. And then that's it, and that's the end of it. And then you don't that's the get the fullness of it. It's the traditions. Mm -hmm. it was, absolutely. Well, that's mistaken, part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mistaken following the traditions. For and what does the Bible say? The traditions of man make the word of God of no avail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you want to say, Chris? I'm sorry. I just, uh, I just thought about something that when, when people say that, say, do you remember when you got it? People go through a lot of changes in their life. Yeah. They get become alcoholics, they become drug addicts, they go through a lot of things that will make their mind not think about that particular time or something happened. And then, did you get saved then? Doesn't it say that you work out your self salvation? Mm. See, the, th the thing about it is, is that I might have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ when I was small and going to that little church on Crawford Road. 
But I made, I did so much sinning there all the way up. Mm. So I had to relearn again. I had to, I had to, God had to put me in a place where I could remember what salvation was all about. And then for me, I'm just, I'm talking yeah. about for me. I'm not talking about other people, but right. when I realized that I would say this when I went to Army and I went to Germany and I was standing there watching it rain mm -hmm. for five minutes, the rain would stop and the sun would come out. The sun would stop and the rain would come out. And I, and I was drinking Thunderbird and I'm saying, they got another God. I got to crying and got on my knees. I was in the Army. I, I could, and I think at that particular time, regardless of what my past Pastor George did to us when we was a kid and led us to the Lord, took, made sure that we had a wonderful life coming up as children. That was the time when I remember that I really got saved yeah. because I really recognized yeah. at that point that I needed the Lord. Mm -hmm. I had to go to another foreign country to realize mm -hmm. how important it was for me mm -hmm. at that time because I think we can say, oh, I got baptized and, and, and or I got saved on July 10th, 19th, what about blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when did we really start recognizing mm -hmm. that the Lord was our Savior? And I think what you're saying too, I think, when did you, when the change was so evident that that event That's right. was a mark, you, you had a place in time, That's right. not a date in time, but a That's place. A place I remember time. exactly when I truly accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. This one thing happened, and that's when I gave myself over that He is the Lord, He is my Savior. Yeah. Did you yeah. want to say something? I'll get back to you. I know you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, see, I think what happens to some people, like myself, I grew up in a very religious family, and I grew up and I was Catholic. And they always tell you, do and don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you believe by blind. Okay, I don't want to say faith, okay, that their ways are right. They wouldn't lead you down the wrong path because yes. they talk about Jesus. Right. Okay, and who's going to do that? Who's right. psychopathic, right? Mm -hmm. So your family's following it and they're nice people. Mm -hmm. And you save the animals, you save the people, you're nice to everybody, you don't have sex out of marriage, you don't, you know, but what you're doing is a checklist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're crossing the T's, you're dotting the I's, and you're becoming who you think Jesus is. Okay, mm -hmm. so my whole life I led this very convoluted way to follow Jesus. So I became a doctor, did all these things because people were going to get help and they were going to see Jesus, okay? But, so I cried for these uh, two and a half years because I felt like I was being isolated from God. I felt like he couldn't use me anymore. And one day, he said to me that I wasn't not using me, he was procuring me mm. to be like him. I wasn't on the shelf, I was gonna be the real sinner. Mm. See, before I had been all the good works, yeah. but I had to come to the end of myself that it wasn't about what I could do to be like Jesus, it was what could Jesus do through me yes. to yeah. show him. Yeah. Yes. Because if I yeah. couldn't show in a dark world that all their goodness wasn't good enough. Mm. They need the Savior, and they don't need him to get them to heaven. They need him to make them like him. We suffer to be like him because we crush that flesh that wants to say me, 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 and do what I want to do and say I'm sorry, whatever it be. I don't want to get off the track. The point is, is that He's making, changing me from the inside. Of course I feel lost. Of course I don't feel because what I thought was right wasn't. And so mm -hmm. he also wants to call, form us into his church. Amen. Now. Amen. Thank yeah. God for that. That's what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Those moments, those transitional moments yeah. that you know I've been touched. Go ahead, Thurman. I'm sorry. I'm just. Pastor, uh, Bob Dalekin goes to the prison and stuff. He was in jail there six years ago. So his ability to communicate with those prisoners and yeah. stuff is unbelievable mm -hmm. because some of them were, were there when he was there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So uh, it's mm -hmm. an example of, uh, you know, and I always tell them when I would go that Nelson Mandela was in jail for 27 years 
and then he became the president of South Africa. Mm. Your case is not hopeless. Mm. You know, you may not be getting to do just exactly what you want to do today, but the, there's always hope. There's always hope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you'd be surprised how intelligent these guys, they read better than we do. They have them all read, it's a part and everything. They all read. They ain't got nothing else to do but read, you know? So yeah, they read, 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 read. When he's referring to, we have a, 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 yes, we have a prison ministry with Brian Sandella. He's over with He's a sister he's, church. He's yeah. a sister oh, church. Yeah. That's well, what, I don't know. That's what Candy, how Candy described it. Well, we're the parent yeah. church. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're under our uh, yeah. wings. Our, wings. Yeah. our government wings. documentation, basically. Yeah. And if you stick around, I'll tell you the Brian Sandella story, but we're going to get back to Bible yeah. study. Yeah. Um, this is a very rich story. Um, talking about redemption, talking about oh, change, gosh, talking yeah. about a person that used to be a drug lord is now a pastor over what used to be gang members. Mm -hmm. And he got he has four or three prison ministries that he goes to and he spreads the gospel. Yeah, and just so um, Yeah, it's quite a, it's a it's an quite amazing story. story there's of there's more that you can tell about it and yeah. everything else. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the better question is when did you when did your old self die? Yeah, that's Because that's when it really happens. I mean, I've had friends tell me like that there's a whole new, like I would have like there's a whole new light. Yes. Not 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 as a you know not the not to bring the focus on me, but just the just show what Jesus did. Yeah, you ain't the thermon I grew up with. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know you. This is really thought provoking. It's yes. making you go deeper. And I'm thankful. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just, I, I want to say this because it's like everybody's saying here. Me and my wife had a stroke last year. She broke her ankle last year. Mm -hmm. I had COPD. Mm -hmm. And she broke her ankle in February, the first week in February. And in May, May the 11th, she had a stroke. But I had, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't walk. I was overweight, 260 some pounds and everything, couldn't do anything. <clears throat> in December, around the latter part of December, the first of January, I noticed I could walk. I could go through Walmart without pushing mm -hmm. the cover. And I'm saying to myself, God, you know what? Are you healing me? What's going on? So, uh, I just kept it up and then I could go cut the grass without picking a chair with me to sit down. <laughs> and then she broke her she broke her ankle on February. Mm -hmm. And I realized then that God healed me oh, to take care of her. Mm -hmm. But he was also putting us in a situation, not totally like Job in a way, because we we're struggling to do whatever we gotta do. Mm -hmm. But he's teaching me one thing. And I I'm, I'm, I study the Old Testament inside out because yes. I never, I tell anybody, you can never learn the things about God just from the New yes. Testament. Amen. Yes. You can learn about Jesus, right. but not God. And a lot of people don't understand, some people don't understand that God did works in, in yes. things in the, in, the, in the Old Testament mm. that a lot of people that teach now don't even want to talk about. Right. Preachers won't even preach it. Mm. But when he told me real this, and, I, and, and I, I'll pass it on, I'm an all or nothing God. Mm. I said, all or nothing. He said, he said, what does the commandment yeah. say? Love the Lord like God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all that might, all our strength. Okay, if you put that together, go back to what does Proverbs 25 say? Trust the Lord with all your heart, with, you know, need, yeah. need not unto your understanding. Right. And acknowledge him in all our ways. Yeah. And he asked me, he says, what is the main two words in there? What is the main words in that, in, in that scripture? I said, well, trust. And he said, well, trust in the Lord. Mm, no. He said, the main two words in there, he said, when it says, trust in the Lord with all, oh. as one. Yes. Lean not unto your own understanding. Mm, yes. Acknowledge him in all yeah. your ways. Mm. And he should direct your path. Mm. And I found out 
There was nothing left over for anybody else if I trust him because what he expressed to me, if you trust me, you don't have to worry about anybody else. Yeah. Because the fact is that I'll make them come around to where you are because you're going to be where I am. Yeah. And then he told me, he told me also understanding, understanding him. He said, if you, if you pray through my son, because we said Jesus is the way, and ask Jesus to give you my knowledge and my wisdom, you can't fail. So that's part of my ministry when, I, when I'm on the streets and wherever I go. I teach, talk, teach people that if you ask in Jesus' name mm -hmm. for the knowledge and the wisdom of God, yes. you can't fail. So oh, I tell a lot of young people this and everything. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that we don't get it because we've been told that we don't have to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. I've heard, yes. and forgive me for throwing out a name, but one of the big name pastors, and I won't throw his name out there, you will need to listen. He said that you cannot give God all your heart mm. because you have marriages, you have kids, you have, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and mm. the Lord told me, he says, if you give me all your heart, I'll teach you how to love everyone else. Come on. Amen. 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 That's what, that's what he told me because Ooh, that's why we, this country is so messed up with bigotry, racism, and all this other crazy stuff mm -hmm. is because we don't know how to love like God wants to love. Mm -hmm. We love like we want to love, and we love who we want yes. to love. But if I'm sitting right here, and the Lord show up, and he look in our heart, how many of us going to really be saved? Right. Mm -hmm. Because we have other things that we have put before God. Our children, our husband, oh, our wife, yes. our mother, our father. Mm -hmm. But if we put God first, he would teach us yeah. how to love yeah. every one of them. Yeah. And I found that out that out by dealing with her and other people, family and friends. When mm -hmm. Jesus told me, he says, mm -hmm. he said, the, 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 your enemy be those in your household. Mm -hmm. Your enemy yeah, be your, the, the mother going to turn against the daughter yes. and the father. Yes. Yes. I, I didn't understand. I said, no, that's kind of deep. He said, watch it. Why? Mm. Because situations bring things around that you don't even understand why it got like this. But when you get the people get to shaking head and in the church, we are so judgmental now, it's unbelievable. Mm. And with 60 yeah. denominations. Mm. With 60 denominations, well, right. I don't like them, they got this to right. I don't like them, they yeah. got this, they don't do this, they don't do that, that like mm. this, this, that, mm. you know. Pick and choose what you want to do. No, well, this, I like this Burger denomination King. better because mm -hmm. I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, this is not Burger King. It's not that it's your way. It's where he is the way. No, as you were saying, the Old Testament conceals what the New Testament reveals. And, That's right. Oh, and then it was talking about um, trusting the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Listen. And he will be a light unto, he will be right. a light unto your path. And as you were speaking, I was hearing the word idolatry. We get caught up in what we want to worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not what he said. He said, put me first. Yeah. In all things, put him first. Mm -hmm. Because he can show you the way, not a way, not many ways, the way to get the results that you will be most grateful for. Don't get me going. It don't take oh, much. No. Let's go on. <laughs> don't get me going. But, but it's, it's all part of what you were still teaching. We're still learning about the side of the show. Yeah, but the main thing about it is that it's, it's a little bit different now. Yeah. Because if you teach people to follow what Jesus was teaching us, and Jesus was teaching us how to be like God. Because yeah. this is me. God put him here to show to show who God is. Mm -hmm. Jesus was our grace, God's grace. He was our heart, God's heart. He was our ultimate love, God's ultimate love. Mm -hmm. And he gave it to us so we can learn how to be that way. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm learning that. I've learned it. Amen. And it, because of these trials that I'm going through, he's showing me, you don't have nobody else but me. And yeah. when you learn that, I think then it, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is going to get through, but I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to try to sit back as much as I can and not say anything else. Mm -hmm. The main reason that, that we, this should be taught everywhere right now, and I pray that when we go through this, that we will be able to understand better. But the church does not teach boldness. Mm -hmm. You do not hear about boldness being teached. If you adapt to that, you draw yourself to that. 
When I come in, he got a personality. He cracks jokes. He, he puts himself out there and everything. Make yourself friendly. This is the kind of thing that the Lord wants to see, that great character. You spoke, and when you spoke, I, and when I heard you read, then I felt the love. When you was talking, come on in and join. That's what we're supposed to feel, but we run from it because we stay at home and look at TV. Yeah. But the boldness mm -hmm. means that I'll stop anyone on that street. Mm -hmm. I'll stop I'll, any, any store, whatever it is, and lift up the name of Jesus. Because mm. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Mm. And if he said that, it wasn't about just on the cross. It was in life. Mm. And that's what we, yeah. we are taught these things about life. Uh, we say, oh, when Jesus was on the cross, and so when he was lifted up, and he talked about when he was on the cross, when he was lifted up, we, so he'll draw all men. No, he was talking about in life because Jesus really never died. He just laid down and rested for a little while, and then he got up and went on and started teaching everything else. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Because Jesus never talked about death the way we did. He always talked about we sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. See, yeah. and, to, and to me, he went to sleep for three days and three nights. Yeah. And when he got up, my God, because don't forget, when he went into the grave, he wasn't sleeping in because he went down to hell and speak to those who's in hell. Mm -hmm. And see, there's a lot of things that if we would learn and put the New Test the Old Testament and New Testament together, mm -hmm. we had the discipleship. Yeah. And we would know that there's more. Amen. When you know yeah. the whole story. Hallelujah. Like when you get a half a truth, what's a half a truth? Amen. It's a lie because you don't have the whole story. Oh, yeah. and, and then you don't have that desire to want to know more. Because the more you study and you get to know him, mm -hmm. the question is, okay, you must have more for me. Right. There must be something I'm not doing because, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's not enough for me just to be saved, sanctified. Mm -hmm. No. So, Lord, why am I here? And that question, mm -hmm. like I said in the beginning, of my purpose. Yes. And why helping my brother and sister until my season comes is just as important as me when my season comes. So me helping you with your ministry. How can I help you? How can I help you? How can I, even if it's cash donations or if I come out there with you on the sidewalk and the highways and the byways, if I take the time to explain as I understand if I help you in the various seasons, because helping you, I'm helping me at the same time. And more so important, I'm pushing forward the kingdom. So let me, let, let me get to this other part, because this is like, it's go. And with that definition of a disciple in mind, with its three um, elements, a follow-up question is in order. I think I read this. Mm -hmm. Every one of us should ponder this question, am I a disciple of Jesus? Answering this question calls for more deliberation than where do I go to church or when do when did I get saved? Whether or not you are a disciple of Jesus has strong implications for how you live today, not just for a decision made years ago. Now here it is. It's being a disciple optional. In scripture, the concept of being a disciple is not an add-on to conversation. It is part of conversion. An adage says, what you win what you win them with is what you win them to. Hello. It is how you present it in the beginning that will shape what they will eventually be. So if you make it about Jesus died for you, then you should be grateful. Yes, he did. But why did Jesus die for you? If you don't, you put them a reason to want to go beyond his death, burial, resurrection. Right? And it goes, and the people are won over only to the obvious benefits of salvation, hello, say forgiveness of sins and an eternity in heaven, then we cannot expect them to become the kind of disciples who deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow Jesus, Luke 9, 23. We must therefore be clear and upfront about the call to become a disciple. The word of God teaches that the decision to receive Christ's salvation is also a decision to follow the path of discipleship found in the Bible. Consider the following analogy. Whenever a newborn enters this world, and we just talked about a newborn baby, Thurman, was that you? Immediately upon arrival, a nurse administers a simple health test called the APGAR, A P G A R, assessing the new baby's health with five basic criteria. A nurse will check the newborn's color, heart rate, reflexes, muscle tone, and respiration. Donna, is that correct? Thank you. She's a doctor. They conduct these tests not because a healthy birth is the end of, is the end goal for every child or parent, but yeah. because a healthy baby is only the beginning of their life, yes. and they need to ensure the baby begins well. 
So it's very serious how we start a thing, how we start our relationships, except especially babes in Christ, right? A healthy birth is the best indicator of a healthy life to follow. That, that should be displaced around the church while we do what we do, you know, to the level we do it. A spiritual birth is the same. When a person makes the decision to fully embrace Jesus as both Savior and King, they enter into a spiritual new birth, best seen as the coming together of five elements, faith, repentance, baptism, the, the reception of the Holy Spirit, and the forgiveness of sin. When these five elements come together into one single decision, together they become a fierce commitment to live for Jesus. Just as with the Apgar test at physical birth, having all five fully functioning in new spiritual birth makes for the healthiest of outcomes. The Apostle Paul describes our new birth with a focus on water baptism. So, you want to carry it from here? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. It's Romans 6, 3 through 6 and 11. Baptism imitates the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The person's old self dies and is buried, and the person rises up from, wa from the waters committed to a new life. In that new life, they learn what it means to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. But here's our main point. Baptism no more serves as the ultimate moment of the Christian life than the Apgar test serves as the ultimate moment of a per person's human existence. It is only the start of a new life. A healthy spiritual birth launches the follower of Jesus fully and freely into the life of a disciple. Faith gives them wings to fly. Repentance removes the hindrances, hindrances of flight. Baptism is the moment of leaving the nest. The Holy Spirit allows the believer to spread wings. And with the commitment to soar into the life intended for them, the rich life of a disciple of Jesus. You can access, that's just the extras, okay. the short book. So right. as we can see, the importance of knowing not just why we accepted Christ, but what is expected of us. What is our real purpose? It doesn't matter what your call is. It doesn't matter if you are one of the five-fold ministries or you're just a servant of the house of the Lord. What matters is that you understand the whole purpose is that you be disciples so that you can go and make disciples. And that, I think, was key. Anybody else like to comment? I think that sums it up, huh? <laughs> yeah, the leader, uh, bring the body and the mind will follow. Mm -hmm. We take a look at all the people that come to this building every week and everything else. And then we end up with a handful of people sitting here working on uh, learning more about it and stuff. Where uh, our uh, focus point and stuff is, uh, you know, we, we, we need to be committed to bring the body and the mind will follow. It's, uh, we can't learn about all of this stuff. The preacher in 45 minutes is not going to teach us all of this on Sunday morning mm -hmm. with, between the offering and the testimonies and this and that and this and that and it, it isn't going to happen but it's a matter of uh you know bring the body and the mind will follow and it's repetition 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 how do you learn something really well you just keep going over it and over it and over it and over mm -hmm. it and over it until yeah. you can see it forwards and backwards and everything and this is you know and you just sit here for years and years and question, why is there always just a handful of people at the Bible study? Sometimes the one on Monday about revelations and stuff, there's, you know, mm -hmm. you start talking about gloom and doom, you get a whole lot more candidates, mm -hmm. you know. But the one on Monday, they got 20, 20 people usually, mm -hmm. 15 to 20, but that, you know, it's a lot of information just even trying to dissect Revelations and and and, uh, and Matthew. I think people just have gotten used to having a secondhand relationship with the Lord because, mm -hmm. just like you were saying, I mean, so much of the stuff, um, 
you know, I'm not going to call out any specific, I believe I all the deno domina denominations <laughs> have, yeah. we, none of us have it 100% right, none of us do, um, but um, we just kind of, some of us were just kind of taught like, like you said, you just believe, you know, things, it's just like anything, it doesn't even have to be with religion or anything, you, you, you are told something by someone, a trusted person, and you believe it, but something I always tell my kids, because we do Bible study, I say, but you don't take my word for it, you guys need to search this stuff out and work this out with God yourself, because that's what we did, and I think that's maybe where, but I think part, I mean, one of the small parts of it where it's lacking is that people just don't know, they don't even realize, they don't, like I was saying, they don't realize you can have an actual relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. and what that looks like and what you're saying. It doesn't end with, okay, I gave my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, woo, like everybody stops celebrating there and they're like, no, mm -hmm. there's this more. The there's way more. You can have so much more, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and be so much more. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the purpose to, um, yeah, I, I think that's, I think, I feel sad about that because I, I think I think people just leave church feeling um, like the, empty, the, like that wasn't an, an that, the that culture. didn't fulfill. Has it, has Which channel on YouTube do I get this information from? Yeah. Well, right. Then, yeah. I, there should be something on YouTube that'll give me all the information that I need. Yeah. Well, um, before before we go off the path. I, I put together a video to talk about the blessed rhythms. It's just two minutes if you'd like to watch it. And it explains. Hi. Hi. So, uh, yeah, we put to, I put together a, a video on blessed rhythms. And so this just gives you a little information. And also, I gave you a printout of uh, five simple ways to bless and what it all means. If you'd like, I'd like to play the video. So this is just 10 minutes. And then we can go from there. Okay? So I want to turn this around so that you, you can see it over here. Oh, I love this part. <laughs> so, and then we'll go from there. And then that'll conclude our Bible study for tonight. But I just want to say thank you to each and every one that came tonight. Um, thank you, I mean, for just your testimonies. You know, just the level of your understanding on various things. That, that blessed me. And I pray that everybody got something from this tonight. So what I'm trying to get it to do is. As you sit there, I'd like to say something. Everybody. Go ahead, sir. I thank you. I thank you for everything. I'm honored to be here with you all because I'm, I know that y'all love the Lord. And I, I can feel that sitting here. And I need to be here because at first we was going to see if we could find a, another place that had a bigger crowd or something like that. But the Lord sometimes just leads you where you need to be. Come on so now. I, I'm honored to be here with God's children. And I want to say this. By studying this, and I think all of us have, the conclusion I come to is that we don't fear God enough and respect God. And that's why we don't do what we need to do. Come on now. But does that make any sense? Because the fact is, is that we are taught that we shouldn't have to fear God. Right. But through the whole Old Testament, it talks about fear God. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I fear my earthly father, but he beat my face when I messed up. And I, got, I knew that I, I should do what he told me to, or there's going to be definitely going to be consequences. And when I got to the point where uh, I, didn't, they, I didn't cry anymore, I said, it's all right. From now on, you get grounded. I'll get your attention one way or the other. I heard the other day. One of the best teachers I know say that God does not even punish us for our sins. Not as you are being punished. Well, the only, the only funny thing about that is, is that there's a lot of things we don't understand in the world because the fact is when Jesus said seek me first the kingdom of God, he meant that to understand the old testament and he studied the kingdom of God. Because Israel is Israel right now is kind of messed up and everything because of the fact that their translation is a little bit different. They're kind of confused what they, what they have going on for them. 
They can't understand that little country surviving all of what they've been through is because the hand of God is still in the He loves them so much and he's protected them through all this mess. They've been living in hell for a long time. But the thing about it is that they don't fear God the way that we should. We don't respect God the way we should. And the reason is we got Russia now telling us what to do, China, and then just kind of spitting at us. Uh, our man is waiting for a bet. We don't know which direction we go. And our people in this country here that have so much that hate and so much anger and so much hurt, they don't get the answer from the preachers that they need to get to. And they forgot that one of the key books in the Bible has the, one of the most answers, and that's the book of Isaiah. That's mm -hmm. the book that Jesus. And they asked him about things, and he went into took that 12 years old. He was teaching our Isaiah. Yes. When, he, when the, when the, mm -hmm. the apostles and the, and, the, and the disciples, they talk, they talk about Isaiah. They, they get the name in the New Testament of Isaiah more than any other prophet. Because of the fact is that you can find just about any answer in Isaiah that you can't find in the New Testament. And all of that comes from not respecting God's word. And there's not enough of it that we're here. So we go ahead and get that thing. I want to go ahead and introduce you to one of the new books. Welcome to a journey through the blessed Africa, a journey that bridges ancient wisdom with modern day practice, guiding believers to live out their faith authentically and purposefully in today's world. We begin with prayer, the foundational cornerstone of our journey. Just as the early disciples devoted themselves to prayer in Acts 1 verse 14, seeking God's guidance and empowering for their mission. So too do believers today unite their hearts and voices in fervent prayer gatherings. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance in all that we do. May your spirit lead and empower us as we embark on this journey of discipleship. Amen and amen. From local prayer circles to global prayer movements, believers of all backgrounds and walks of life join together, interceding for personal needs, societal challenges, and global crises alike. In the quiet moments of prayer, amidst the clamor of the world, hearts are opened, burdens are lifted, and divine guidance is sought. In a world saturated with noise and distraction, the art of listening has never been more crucial. Just as Jesus listened compassionately to the needs of the marginalized and downtrodden, so too are we called to practice attentive listening in our interactions with others. Thank you, James. I appreciate your willingness to listen and offer guidance. Whether in counseling sessions, community forums, or everyday conversations, the practice of active listening fosters empathy, connection, and mutual understanding. As we lend our ears to the voices around us, we create space for healing, reconciliation, and transformation to take root. The act of sharing meals transcends cultural boundaries, serving as a catalyst for fellowship, reconciliation, and community building. Just as Jesus shared meals with tax collectors and sinners, so too do we gather around tables to break bread together. It's wonderful to see everyone coming together like this. Food truly has a way of bringing people closer. Absolutely, Sarah. There's something special about sharing a meal with fellow believers. It strengthens our bonds and reminds us of our shared identity in Christ. Whether in person or virtually, the shared experience of dining together fosters bonds of friendship and solidarity. Around the table, strangers become friends, barriers are broken down, and the love of Christ is tangibly expressed through hospitality and communion. From volunteer-driven initiatives addressing homelessness and hunger to grassroots organizations advocating for social justice and equality, acts of service abound in our communities. Sarah, it's inspiring to see your dedication to serving others. Your compassion and willingness to lend a helping hand reflect the heart of Christ. Thank you, James. It's been a humbling experience to be able to make a difference in the lives of those in need. Whether through hands-on projects or advocacy work, individuals and groups channel their time, resources, and talents towards making a tangible difference in the lives of others. In serving the least of these, we reflect the selfless love of Christ and embody his call to love our neighbors as ourselves. In an age of unprecedented connectivity and digital communication, 
The opportunity to share the gospel message has never been more accessible. Sarah, I admire your boldness in sharing your faith with others. Your willingness to proclaim the hope found in Christ is truly inspiring. Thank you, James. It's a privilege to share the love of Christ with those around me and to witness the transformative power of the gospel in their lives. Through digital evangelism and personal witness, believers leverage technology to proclaim the hope and redemption found in Christ. Whether through a simple conversation or a viral testimonial, the transformative power of the gospel reaches far and wide, touching hearts and lives in ways previously unimaginable. As we journey through the blessed acronym, beginning with prayer, listening attentively, sharing meals, serving selflessly, and proclaiming the gospel, May we be inspired to live out our faith boldly and compassionately in every area of our lives. Together, let us embody the love of Christ, bringing hope, healing, and reconciliation to a world in need. As we transition from exploring the... Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. So it just rolls over and go to Sutra, Acts 2, verse 5, 25. The reason why I wanted to do that because he asked me to talk to you about what blessed me in the acronym. Because we are a church, we have... Tuesday night meal. We used to do it on, used to also do it on Saturday. And then we do a mobile pantry. It is the second produce. We give out day. produce last month. Uh, we worked with the youth with senior citizen. Today we uh, get a truckload of, of uh, food and stuff over there. And, and then the week from Saturday, the uh, fourth Saturday of the month, we have a produce distribution here. And uh, we have a men's uh, Bible study breakfast first and third Saturday mornings and stuff. And, uh, you know, we're. Uh, outreach and reaching those that can't get, you know. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank and then from 5 to 6, we have a hot meal. And then from 5.35 to 6, we actually do a Jesus story. So that's called Dinner Tray. And that's something that we've been doing for years. We did it through COVID. And so I just wanted you to know some of the things that we did. And that's why I had you that sheet of paper. All our bulletins are gone. So go ahead. And we had a homeless ministry under this roof with uh, them. Yeah. We got a pet pantry ministry where they give away pet food because senior citizens will forego buying their medication to feed their pets. And in the process of giving away pet food, we're helping assure that those senior citizens are uh, have the opportunity to get the medication that they need and so forth. We're, uh, you know, we, I guess well, the pastor's an old farm boy and is the hardest working man I've ever seen in my life. And he's said uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, he's worked them constantly. He's on vacation right now. And uh, you know, it's what I when I said I'd rather see a sermon than hear one, I'm gonna look in and work and get involved with all of these sermons and ministries and stuff and everything else. And you know, feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the poor, and help the spiritually bankrupt. And, and do these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen made up over there and boxed up already, here you go, you know? So, yeah. you know. So I just wanted to share a little bit about what we yeah. do. Mm -hmm. We thank you for coming and visit with us. And please feel free, uh, thank you, feel free to come back. And so that's just a, a bulletin, a little flyer of what we do here tonight. Does anybody have anything they want to say? Where are you from? In this area here, we're on 272. I mean, about 271 Yeah, you're not very far. We're actually seven Okay. Um, but right. we, we, I was going to ask you. Yeah, this is actually seven people, but I'm on the bridge, so I don't in church anytime. Right. I just want to go over and I, 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 
We at home learning. Getting everything you can off of YouTube. Um, right. church, when our church come on Saturday, yeah, but I'm on the, all day looking at trying to hear what people are saying and everything. And so I go by here and see this sign. I said, oh, I'll find it. Said, the sign. <laughs> Well, that, sign, that sign, that sign was a job getting that sign done. But that sign's made a, you know, in trying to communicate with the community that we, that uh, we have blessings for you. All you gotta do is walk in here and you, you know. That sign is what Brian
Nice to meet you. Uh, come back and see us anytime. We got a revelation about the study on Monday evening. And I'm the secretary, but all my bulletins are going. I should be happy, but I don't have a Okay. <laughs> Yes, 
They can't say that there was a light show. Yes. They can't say anything because what really, really got to my head is when I see, when I see the trips the other day. Mm-hmm. They can't say nothing about, oh man, this, that, whatever, but we got it. Yeah. 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 You want a chair for her? I can go check in the warehouse and see if there's a chair. You want a wheelchair? Yes. Let me go see what we got in there. If you got it. Yeah. 